Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Knicks Cave. I'm Jan, the Knicks fan, and let's get right into it. Hey, what's up, YouTube, and welcome back to the Knicks Cave. I'm your host, Jan, the Knicks fan. Let's get right into it. Um, before we start, though, I want y'all to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and definitely leave a comment. Well, the New York Knicks is about to take on the Phoenix Suns tonight. And, um... We're going to take this win. I, I don't know. I'm just being a little sarcastic. But this is a game. This is a good test. If the Knicks come out and do their thing against the Phoenix Suns and get this win, it, it can only boost boost their confidence. I know we had some bad games, some letdowns against some inferior teams. But if we come out and do what we're supposed to do against the Phoenix Suns and get this victory, I don't know. I see the whole season taking a turn. I see the team this this. I mean, I mean, because the Suns are a real good team. I mean, they're coming off 15, 15 straight wins. I know they had a, you could say, a relatively light schedule. You know what I'm saying? Just the last two wins was against um, the San Antonio Spurs and Cleveland Cavaliers. And um, my man Devin Booker dropped 35 points on, um, the, um, on Cleveland. Excuse me. But uh, I still think the Knicks have a chance to beat these guys. And um, I'm going to break it down how the Knicks going to do it. I mean, it's it's obvious what they need to do, but um, the Knicks need to, I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, another thing. I just want to say happy Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? I hope everybody out there had a good meal. You know what I'm saying? Got to spend time with their family, their loved ones. Or, you know, if you don't believe in Thanksgiving, I just hope, you know, you celebrate the day uh, in some type of way. I know a lot of people don't celebrate certain holidays, but at the same time, when the holiday come around, you you find yourself in the mix in the mix of the holiday, whether you like it or not. But let's get back to the New York Knicks. Uh, like I said, the Knicks have an opportunity to end the, their impressive streak, but it's going to take every New York Knicks player, not just the starters. It's going to take everyone to have a, to be on the top of their game in this game right here, because the Suns has been lethal at, on this season. They have been, they have. I'm not going to lie to you. They, their um, power rankings, they're ranked number two in um, on the power rankings, but the Knicks. If they can limit Chris Paul, I, I know. I know it's easy said and done, but if they can limit him, you know what I'm saying, just stop his scoring. And basically, if, I wouldn't even mind Chris Paul getting his points because right now he's averaging 14.1 point, point, 14 .1 points a game. But if they can just limit his, limit his assists, you know what I'm saying, get him down to two or three assists, the Knicks will have a chance to win this game. And... Um, that's what I'm saying, but I know it's going to be hard because Chris Paul is an elite point guard. He's very smart with the ball in his hand. So if the Knicks can somehow limit Chris Paul from getting them assists, and that means playing defense on the other guys, everybody stepping their defensive game up tonight, we can win this game. I'm going to be honest with you. And I'll get to that stat because it's basically what, what really hurt the New York Knicks is their perimeter defense. So if we can somehow put you know put our offense together and then step up on the perimeter defense because that was our strength last year, but it's our weakness this year. And I guess it's Kimber Walker and Evan Foyer, Evan a little slow footed, and Kimber Walker. I don't know. You can't say it's the knee, but I just think Kimber Walker is past. I don't know. Sometimes you, it 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 comes. You know, what I'm saying Father Time catches up to people, and um, maybe other GMs seem to then him way long before the Knicks got him. But, you know, we, like I said in my last video, we didn't really move. We're not, we didn't give up anything. We're not losing anything. This is a good experiment. And who knows? We got another year. If he can just take a role, um, well, he ain't got to take it because he is relatively a bench player once the fourth quarter come around. But like I said, if the Knicks can slow down Chris Paul, like, you know, the assist, because, I mean, I don't mind him getting his points, but we got to stop everybody else from scoring. And I get to the rest of the team averages. You know what I'm saying? Because when Chris Paul is not scoring, he's basically felicitating the ball. You know what I'm saying? So we got to find a way. And I think if the Knicks was to bring, and this is a long, I know what it happened, but if the Knicks were to start Emmanuel quickly, we don't even got to start Emmanuel quickly. We just let Kimber Walker play the first three minutes. You know what I'm saying? Just to get some sweat on Chris Paul. And then we bring Emmanuel quickly out there to hound him the rest of the way. Because Emmanuel quickly plays some good defense. He, he be up in players' face. He be playing some defense. So we can get that kind of defense on Chris Paul, especially Emmanuel quickly is young. He's going to keep up with Chris Paul every way, of the step, every step of the way. I think we'll have a chance, you know what I'm saying? Number two, we're going to have to stop Devin Booker. Uh, Devin Booker, he's their leading scorer. 
And uh, he's averaging 23 points a game right now. But we can't let him get in open space because he's killing three. He's hitting, hitting the three point at a high rate right now. So we got to stay on him. On And that's that's going to be Evan Foyer's job to start the game. And honestly, historically, Evan Foyer had played well against um, Devin Booker. I got some stats. And like my favorite phrase, I'm going to get into that. <laughs> but like I said, He's averaging 23 points, 5.5 rebounds, 4.8 assists. And Booker, once this season, again, he's had elevated his game because he, he was fading out. People started forgetting about Devin Booker. But once Chris Paul got over to Phoenix, everything changed. But like I said, the way he elevated his game, because he's just not scoring this year, he's actually passing the ball. So he got his assist rate up. So he's doing what he's supposed to do on an all-around player right now because he's not being, he's not that bad on defense either. He's connecting on nearly 40% of his three-pointers. He's shooting 45% from the field. So, I mean, Evan Foyer is going to have to really step up his game if, he, if we're going to have a chance of stopping the Phoenix Suns tonight. And my number three reason to think that the Knicks can beat the Phoenix Suns is the starters. The last game, the starters came out hot. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest with you, one game, uh, we had we did get in Phoenix ass for basically three quarters, and then they got they they ran away with the game at the end of the game. But this is a different team. We have a little bit more punching power. So I think if our defense can do what we did uh, last year, the second the first game we met Phoenix, we'll have a chance of winning this game. You know what I'm saying? Because. I'm not even going to say an expert, but somebody already told me that the Knicks was going to lose these, these six games starting with the Lakers. And so far, we beat the Lakers. And I know the Knicks like making people feel bad. You know what I'm saying? I know I like to. I like making them feel bad, trying to diss my team. But anyway, like I said, if the starters could come out and not have another deficient game, then just get out there, run up down the court, play some defense, make the baskets, and most importantly, keep the ball moving. Because that's what we really killing our um, offense the start in offense, they get stagnant. They don't move that ball. Team started playing that. Um, they start playing zone defense. And once you play, and if, you, if you're not moving the ball, you're not going to beat a zone defense. You know what I'm saying? Because it doesn't take much for the man to run over and help you once you break down the other player because he's basically standing in one position. So I'm not going to only blame it on Julius Randle. I know I said that in the past. But the other players, they got to learn to start cutting to the basket and just moving. You know what I'm saying? Stop being so stagnant and standing still waiting for the ball and watching what this player do and get involved. And Tibbs got to, he got to put emphasis, he got to he gotta tell these, I don't know what he's doing in practice. He got to let these guys know or sit them down and let the bench play. That's, that's how I feel. Like I said, the Knicks currently, well, the Suns are currently the third best defense rating in the league right now. And the Knicks is ranked number 16th. And that's impressive because a week before, a week ago, we was like in, I should have, I, I thought I had that stat. But either way, we was worse than 16. So we have upped our defense in the last couple of games. And that's all we need to win this game. Our defense needs need to be on par. And we just need to come out with um, our offense on all cylinders, hitting shots and getting stops. You know what I'm saying? That's what we need to do to win this game. If the starters are on, but just like I said, if the starters is, and that's why I like my bench, because if the starters can't do it, our bench do it. But he's going to have to manage the bench to where the bench will keep up. I, I'm going to be honest. I think our bench can keep up with any starting group in the NBA right now. Our bench can go pace for pace to a certain extent. And that would be good because we'd be out tired. You know, their stars be getting tired, and we can bring in our stars on their bench players and like I said we have the best bench in the league so I don't think that anybody else benches will be able to be putting up that many points or really I don't know I'm against our stars but we what we've seen lately that that's kind of hard not to say that our stars has been getting like the ass bust I ain't gonna lie our stars be getting the ass bust but the good thing is that Julius Randle is coming up two consecutive games with which he scored 20 points and it looked like he's getting his groove back and what we need, we, what we're going to need, we're going to need Kim Moore from Kemba Walker. We're going to need him to score because the last couple, four games, to be exact, he scored is only in single digits. We're going to need him to play a little better defense. We're going to need him to actually to um, get his assist rating up, start knocking him down to three pointers. That when he started the season, he was shooting that damn near 58%, 53% around there, fluctuating, and he just started dropping each game. So we're going to need him to get his three-point um, shot back up. And then Evan Foyer, we just need him to play like he did in the last two games. 
Because, like I said, Evan Foyer's problem is it's not that he's not trying. He's not getting the ball enough to be who he is. That's honestly, that's just, that's just, that's just what's going on with Evan Foyer. And R.J. Barrett, he's just going to need to score, man. And when he do score, he he, he got to play solid defense. But what really gets R.J. Barrett out the game and why he's staying in funk, because he be worrying about getting a call when he's driving to the basket instead of just making the basket and getting the call after. If he concentrate on more finishing and then other than about getting a foul, he will be out of his slump. And stop shooting threes, man. I mean, when you wide open, take him, but he's he's taking threes, contested threes, and he's not that good of a three-point shooter. You know what I'm saying? He's not a dagger guy. So he got to stop shooting threes unless he got the confidence that he got. I know he looked like he got the confidence, but the shot's not going in. You know what I'm saying? The shots is not going in. Uh, let's run over here and see who's who's in and who's out. All right. Derrick Rose is day-to-day. -day. Mitch Robinson, day-to-day. -day. Derrick Rose can go back his ankle. Um, the concussion protocol with Mitch Robinson still day-to-day. -day. Um, Tobbs gets in there still out with the um, the groin. Um, for the um, Phoenix Suns, Nada is day-to-day. -day. Sarek is out with a knee. And... Kaminsky Frank, the tank, Kaminsky is out. Uh, all three of them players have knee problems. Let's get to them what these percentages are like, what, what um, season's performance for each team. Like I said, um, Phoenix Suns, and, oh, I didn't say Phoenix Suns are 15 and 3. The Knicks are 10 and 8. They're coming with a, against the spread, uh, a non, non record. That's the Suns. The Knicks are 7 11 against the spread. Home away, home. Home and away games. Phoenix Suns are seven and one on away games, and the Knicks are five and five. Oh, we're five hundred at home. We're starting to get a little better at home. Um, excuse me, I just want to um, correct myself. Earlier, I said that the Phoenix Suns was on a fifteen-game win streak when actually on a fourteen-game win streak. The Knicks is on a one-game win streak. Uh, in the last ten games, the Phoenix Suns is ten and zero, and the last ten games, the Knicks are five and five. Uh, Phoenix Suns uh, is third in points per game. The Knicks is 18th. They're third in points definition. It would have Knicks ranked 15th. And assists, they're third. The Knicks is 24th. Steals, they're sixth. The Knicks is 24th. Um, blocks, they're 22nd. And the Knicks, the Knicks is second in blocks. And rebounds, they're in eighth. And the Knicks is 16th. Now, I, I thought they would be in a little higher and uh, will have a better blocking percentage because they got um DeAndre Ayton on that team. But I guess he's more of a scorer and not a blocker. But um the Knicks are gonna have to go in and do something. And like I was now I'm gonna get to the point where I was talking about <laughs> historically Evan Foyer had had a better game. Well good games against Devin Booker. But I'm just gonna go with the matchup real quick. Chris Paul, like this is why I want um um my man Isaiah Thomas 2.0 quickly to start because Kimber Walker allowed Chris Paul to score 18 points a game, 4.5 rebounds, 9.4 assists, and two steals. Derrick Rose, when Derrick Rose played against him in nine games against Kim, um, excuse me, against Chris Paul, Derrick Rose hold, held him to 16.3 points a game, 4.3 rebounds, and 8.7 assists. I mean. Where I want Chris Paul to get held down, they both them still high assist rates ratio. You know what I'm saying? He's averaging nine assists against Kemba Walker and eight assists against um Derrick Rose and 16 points. I mean, that's more than what he's averaging right now for the season. So even one of these guys was the whole um Chris Paul. I mean Chris Paul, well, mathematically, Chris Paul is gonna have a good night. So let's get over to Devin Booker and Evan Foyer. In nine games against Evan Foyer, Devin Booker averaged 16.3 points a game. And he had grabbed three rebounds and four assists. Now, Devin Booker is averaging 23.1 game points per game right now. So in nine games against Evan Foyer, his, he only scored 16 points. Now, if that trend could continue tonight, the Knicks would be going in the right direction. All right, now let's, I'm going to see Evan Foyer. He averaged against Booker 19.6 points when he played against um, Dev, Devin Booker in nine games. So, like I said, Evan Foyer had had a two good like games. I said, last Devin game. Booker have, um, had had his problem going up against um, Kim, um, Evan Foyer. So, if 
if we can get in there and Evan Foyer can get in there and put some pressure on Devin Booker, we should have a good game. All right, um, Judas, I mean, Judas Randle, and yeah, Judas Randle and Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder averages eight points a game, but when he plays against um, Randle, that jumps up to 15 points a game. So Julius Randle is going to have to put some work in on Crowder. Aiton, Aiton averaged 26 points a game, you know what I'm saying, in his last few games and 15 rebounds. Noel averages five points and five rebounds. They already had the advantage in that position. We get over to Barrett. Barrett is averaging 14.8 points a game, whereas Bridges is 13 points a game. But these guys seem to, a lot of players seem to elevate their game once they get in the garden. So we're going to have to see how that work out. Um, I don't know. The Knicks, like I said, the Knicks, the last game against the Lakers, um, I think that, that gave the Knicks a little confidence that they should come out and they should get this victory, to be honest with you. This is how I feel. And before I go, I want y'all to hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? But the most important thing, I want y'all to stay safe, stay healthy. God bless and peace.